praise be praise alike at work and prayer to jesus i repair may jesus christ be Christ be praised let earth's wide circle round in joyful note respond may jesus christ be praised let air and sea and sky from death to height reply may jesus christ be praised amen good morning i'm glad to be back in the state it took it took a long time i'll tell you that my flight was delayed three hours so i got to spend early morning in sfo <laughs> waiting for the airporter so uh, my conference was in North Carolina at uh, Montreat, and it was a good conference. However, I found when I got back on Saturday that one of my faculty members was kind of came down positive with COVID. So I'm being safe with you all. So far, I have tested not negative, and I hope I do. I don't really have any symptoms except that I was in North Carolina for a week, and my allergies were going nuts. Um, so. Um, I will be safe and sorry, and then this prevents me from singing at you, so you're even safer. So, but anyway, we're glad that you're here this morning, whether you're here in person or on, on Zoom. Uh, we are glad that you are here to worship with us as we celebrate our own journeys in faith. No matter where you may be on that journey, whether you're questioning or seeking or wondering, you're welcomed here. We are a manifestation of the UCC and Presbyterian Church and Community Presbyterian Church and East County Shared Ministries. But no matter where you are on your journey, we want to welcome you. As we like to say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Are there any other announcements we need to have this morning um, other than the ones you have in the back of your bulletin? Donald. So as many of you know, I am part of the Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir. And if you go to OIGC.org, uh, tickets for the Christmas concert are already on sale. So go on there and get your tickets. I think we're really starting to push for it. So yeah, um, just check it out. All right. Thank you, Donald. Any others? Our prayer families this week are Angeline Rosenberry and Joan and Ken Schmidt. Uh, prayer churches are Community UCC in Pescadero and 7th Avenue Presbyterian Church. Guess what avenue they're on? 7th Avenue in San Francisco. And our birthday celebrants this week are Merdell tomorrow and Shannon Arsenault on August 20th and Lewis Birch on August 21st. Anniversaries this week are Joanne Chambers and Lynn Lofton on tomorrow, and Jim and Leah Becker on August 21st. So let us join together and sing happy birthday to all our birthdays. Should we just leave you the microphone so you can sing? <laughs> you are all invited to join with me in sharing our land acknowledgement in your bulletin. We share this land, land acknowledgement, acknowledgement, our, our formal, formal statement, statement and, and public recognition of the, of the indigenous, indigenous peoples in, in this, this country, country who have been dispossessed. We acknowledge that all of today's structures are built on indigenous people's ancestral homelands. This is not about placing blame. It is the first step toward building a more inclusive future where we eliminate the ongoing erasure of indigenous people's voices, lives, and history. 
our statement provides an opportunity to seed the path for learning and for respect to blossom and grow. Uh, Donald, would you pour the libation while I read the invitation to it? Okay. Thank you. Libation as part of ancient society was a drink offering to honor and please sacred ancestors, humans present, and humans who are alive but not physically present, as well as the environment. It originated in Africa and spread throughout the world. In African cultures and religions, the ritual of pouring libation is an essential ceremonial tradition and a way of giving homage to the ancestors. Ancestors are not only respected in such cultures, but also invited to participate in all public functions. A prayer is offered in the form of libations, calling the ancestors to attend. Let's call out our ancestors, giving thanks and honor to them. And I start with my mom and dad. Thank you, God, for those who went before us. Ashe. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. God is ever present. And where God is, is holy. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. God is ever present and everywhere is holy. These are holy hands. We're standing on holy hands. God works through these hands, and so these hands are holy. These are holy hands. We're God give us holy hands. God works through these hands, and so these hands are holy. Please stand in body or spirit for the call to worship. To worship is to listen for the ancient song of creation and to recognize within that song our individual songs. To worship is to share these maladies and dissonance of our human condition. Our voices vary, some warble, some bellow, but the song is universal. It is our ode to God and to the God within us. Let us join our hearts and voices to worship God. Opening hymn is number 37, Let All Things Now Living.
By law God enforces the stars in their courses, the sun in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the deep of the ocean proclaim God divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with glad adoration, a song let us raise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to pray in the highest hosanna and praise let us pray together gracious god we gather this morning to add our human voices to the chorus of praise raised to you by wind and water and all life upon land. Become as we are, distracted and weary, hopeful and open, knowing that you accept us and are ever mindful of our cares and joys. Still in us now, many voices that clamor for attention, that we might center ourselves upon you. Speak to us, Spirit of life, in word and melody and quiet, that we may be in our faith and strengthen for your service. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. As we light our peace candle, let us pray. God, you, you are a God of justice. You care for those who are oppressed. You love those who are marginalized. We pray for justice and redemption in this world. Help us to know what is wrong and what is right, and then to do what is right. Help the world to know what is wrong and what is right, and then choose what is right. Provide peace and hope to those who are suffering from injustice. Show them that you are there and you care for them and that you will make all things right. God, we pray for a world full of love and compassion. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Now is our opportunity to share prayers of concern and joy, and we'll invite you to share those. But first, we start with our folks on Zoom. So on Zoom today, we have Brandy Brandon, John R. Henry, Rose Salarzana, and Tom Connick. Do any of you have a prayer to share? I see that Brandy has something. Yes. Um, my concern is that I'm recovering from COVID. I contracted it a day before I was supposed to fly and go on vacation to see my sisters after 18 years. And also my uh, youngest sister who lives in Indiana, the same day her whole family came down with COVID. And my sister Shirley who had the colon cancer fell and was hospitalized with fractures and lacerations. So prayers for, for them. And my gratitude is that I was diagnosed with COVID before I actually got on the plane and, you know, was flying and traveling sick. So uh, Briandi had a few things I'm gonna try to remember, sorry. <laughs> 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 she um, is recovering from COVID. She uh, came down with COVID um, right before she was supposed to fly to visit her sisters. Um, and she's glad that she found out before she flew there. Um, but um, one of her sisters and their family also have COVID. Mm. And um, her sister, who recently had the operation, um, fell and has... Uh, lacerations so she would like prayers for herself and her family yes God in your mercy yeah. anyone else uh, thank you All right. yes good morning everyone let's greet uh, Roberto for a happy happy birthday and wishing him more and more birthdays to come and let's celebrate for the uh, transit after the service. Okay. Praise in our joy, oh God. Prayers. Any other prayers? Yes, Elaine. Uh, I just want to let you know, you probably may have heard that Pat had some tests on Friday um, and that made her very nervous, but I wanted to share with you that they all came back. She does not have cancer. That's the good news, so. We may not be sure what it is, but we know what it is not. Uh, yeah, God in your mercy in our thanksgivings. Others? Donald? Oh, wait. Go ahead, Donald. Oh, you could take her. Oh, you could okay. take her first. He's going to let you, I guess. Donald always wraps that up. Um, prayers for Shelley Fursing Ambrogi and her husband Matt. Their baby is due soon and it'll be Sherry and Chris's first grandchild. Oh, nice. Lord in your mercy and joy. Our youngest grandson, Aiden, turns nine this week. Ah, God in our joys. Say it again. So that folks on Zoom can hear you. Prayers for Bill and Barbara because they haven't been on Zoom. Uh, Lord, in your mercy. Uh -huh. Sorry. Uh, prayers for our friend uh, Linda Strayer in Oregon, friends of ours for 50-some years. She's starting on a cancer journey. She just had her port put in for chemo. She's having a really hard time. They think this is going to work, but still we pray for her along the way. Yeah. Prayer, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Any others? I think you get to go. Okay. Um, so um, I just learned this week that a friend of mine, his name is Melvin Arcega. He passed away. Mm. And um, he's been having some, he had some health issues for a while now. And, um, and also pray for my friend Chris. Um, from what I know, his sentencing is coming up. Uh, we don't know what it entails exactly yet, but we know that it's not 
all that great, but we don't know. We just don't know. Um, so pray for him. And also um, pray for my stepfather. I learned some bad news that his health has been declining. Yeah. And um, so keep him in prayer uh, for sure. Thank you. Thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Are there any others? Okay, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for the wonder of the creation around it, for its beauty, for all the things in it that uh, provide for us. Help us to be careful stewards of what we received. Watch over us that we may use your gifts wisely and well and share them with all of our siblings throughout the world wherever they may be. We know that you are always active in our lives, granting us your peace and your comfort to watch over us with love and grace. We pray for all of those we have mentioned this morning. We pray for those who are in the midst of mourning, for those who need your healing touch, for those who may be anxious, for those who are searching. Guide them with your spirit and your wisdom. Help us to be your faithful people as we hold one another up in prayer and love. Let us pray for all those that we have not mentioned, for those that we hold close in our hearts, and for those we don't know. Let us pray together in silence. God of grace, we give you thanks that you have called to us, that you have called us to be your faithful people in the world. Guide us with your spirit that we may be wise people, that we may choose life over death and love over hate. Continue to guide us and lead us and be your faithful people. Bind us together not only in your love through Christ, but bind us together in our prayers, and especially in the prayer we have been taught. Our parents, who is among us. Blessed be your creation. May your reign be a reality here on earth. May we become more interested in building your kingdom here and now than in waiting for it to come down from above. Let us share our bread with those who hunger. Let us learn to forgive as well as to receive forgiveness. Help us through this time of temptation, delivering us all from evil. For ours is the eternal blessings that you pour upon the earth. Amen. Okay, we're going to take a moment for our mission on two cents a meal. Two cents a meal concept originated with Presbyterian women to provide an opportunity to, to participate in a corporate response to world hunger. The Presbyterian Women's Birthday Offering funded a hunger program that started the Hunger Action Enabler Network back in 1973. In 1975, Rosalind Calvert, whose own family was struggling, Ask God what she could do to help those suffering around the world. She was led to give just two cents a meal. The Calvert family committed to each giving two cents. And in 1976, Rosalind shared the concept with her presbytery. Today, most presbyteries encourage the contribution of two cents or more per person for each meal reminding us of our call to respond as Christians. The offerings are shared locally and beyond. Please bring your gifts forward during our Two Cents a Meal hymn, The Summons. It's number 726.
Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare, should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you and hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Our first reading today is Proverbs 7, verses 1 through 6 in the NRSV, which stands for the New Revised Standard Version. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her sever seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. She has sent out her female servants. She calls from the highest places in the town. You who are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Our second reading is from the fifth chapter of Ephesians, and we begin with the 15th verse. And throughout the second half of Ephesians, the Pauline writer is giving advice and exhortation, and this includes um, uh, this, this particular one in the reading today. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not gr get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in, our, in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a word of God. All creation is a word of God. So our readings today led me to ask the question, partly through some of the commentaries, what is the good life? What is good life? And so the Oxford Language Dictionary defines the good life in its first definition as a, a pleasure and material goods and delight. So I thought about that, and I said, hmm, that's an interesting definition for good life. So I wondered, and it led me to do a little bit of search on the internet, which is part of the fun of this all, right, is uh, what commercials have the good life in them? 
Well, the first commercial that popped up and kept popping up was for Disneyland. <laughs> and further searches and a little bit more de in depth led me to um, LG Appliances, <laughs> Slumberland Furniture, Miller High Life, and Kia. So I wondered, is this, is this what it is? Is the good life being in a house filled with Slumberland furniture and LG appliances, drinking Miller High Light and driving your Kia and going on vacation to Disneyland? <laughs> I heard a no. <laughs> so if we look at the Hebrew Bible, we would hear the writers there probably proclaiming something different as you may know or may not know, is that in Judaism, the Hebrew Bible is called the Tanakh, which is uh, three initials, T and K. And the T stands for Torah, which are the first five books of the Bible. And sometimes we Christians call the Torah the law. Uh, Paul did that. But really a better understanding of the Torah is instruction, how to live faithfully to God and to one another. The other, part, uh, the other parts are the Nevi'im, which is the Hebrew word for prophet. So all those prophets that you read in the Hebrew Bible are the Nevi'im, and usually take up about the last half of the, of the Hebrew Bible. And it, the other part, the remainder, is called the Kethubim, which includes things like Ruth and all those history books ranging from Joshua to Chronicles, uh, Ecclesiastes, Psalms, the Proverbs, um, I think I said Ruth, Ezra, and Nehemiah. And Proverbs and many parts of the Psalms are sometimes called wisdom literature. And wisdom literature is a guide or, or literature that uh, encourages the reader, the believer, to follow God's instructions. Because the wise person is the one who lives faithfully by following the instructions, Right? So the writer said, you know, the writers say, and especially in Proverbs, is that part of the way that we follow God, the way we remain faithful and wise, is by keeping the commandments. Now, I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments there, but what are known as mitzvot. And the mitzvot are those guides that we use to learn how to follow God's love and grace. And in rabbinic tradition, there are 613 mitzvah. Now, there's an easy way to remember that, <laughs> right, is 365 of them, the number of days in a year, 365 of them are negative mitzvah. And what we mean by that is uh, these are things you shouldn't do, right? And 248 which in Hebrew tradition, I know Carol's going to correct me on this, but in Hebrew tradition, it's the number of bones in a human adult body. Easy to remember, right? And in the mitzvot are those uh, commandments that encourage you to love your neighbor and to love God by doing good work. In fact, you know, is that one of the examples I got of a mitzvot was when I was in the Kwanis here in Pittsburgh. Um, one of the one of our members, the, their spouse died, and so several of us went to the funeral to support our, our friend. And afterwards, he was so touched that he told us that we had, had done mitzvah. We had served God in our love for him. All right? So the, pro so the writer of Proverbs especially is considered wisdom literature because they have all these guides for us to understand what it means to be wise people. And in the 8th and ninth chapter of Proverbs, the writer there begins to use a metaphor of wisdom as lady wisdom. And it kind of makes sense that the metaphor works because the Hebrew word for wisdom is feminine. And by the way, it is also feminine in Greek. Um, and it makes sense because a mitvat is a feminine word. So... Lady Wisdom in the 8th chapter is the assistance of God in creating the universe. And 
Wisdom extols and praises God's creative and crafty hand in making the universe great. And so then we get into this ninth chapter where Lady Wisdom is now present in the city and has built her house, a, a very prosperous house, and now sets the table to invite everyone in the city to come and partake of her feast. You know, have you ever noticed in Scripture that meals and wisdom and love and sharing are ubiquitous? Because Lady Wisdom is following the very example that Jesus gave in the, the passage we heard a couple of weeks ago when he fed the 5,000 with the bread and the fishes. And then he invites the crowd around him to understand that the food he fed them is temporary. And he invites them to gain wisdom by partaking of the, bri of the bread of life. And so Lady Wisdom is doing the very same thing. She is setting her table and inviting others to come and partake of that meal so that they may be moved from simpleness to wisdom. To being able to live faithfully in God's love and grace in the world by loving and sharing with their neighbors. Now sometimes I think that these lectionary passages are too short. Because really, the writer uh, uh, in Proverbs contrasts Lady Wisdom with Folly, who is also a woman. And later in this passage, we hear that Folly is doing much the same thing, that she's sitting in her doorway inviting, other, inviting others to partake of her feast. But notice she doesn't have the hospitality of Lady Wisdom by inviting them in. She just simply wants to feed them on the doorstep. And what she tells the wanderers who come by her house is that stolen water is sweet and secret food is delicious. And what the writer of the Proverbs tells us is that what we don't know is that the water and the food that she serves is accompanied by the dead. And that indeed if you partake of her feast, you will end in Sheol, the land of the dead. Wisdom brings life, and folly brings death. So what does it mean to live the good life? Well, I ran across a video just recently on Facebook called homeless, A Homeless Woman in uh, Flies in First Class. And it's a short film. I'm, I would encourage you if you want to go see it. It's not the best acting in the world, but that's okay. But... Um, in the film, what we see is a young man who is sitting in first class, and I, this was a very much appreciated since I had to walk through first class several times this last week. Um, <laughs> and he had put his bag on the seat beside him. And his seatmate shows up. And it's, obviously, it's obvious that she is a person who is down on her luck. And so the man is protesting not that she should not sit next to him. So he doesn't want to move his bag. So the flight attendant intervenes, and he accuses the woman of being a thief and that she has stolen her ticket and that she doesn't belong in first class. So the flight attendant looks at the ticket and determines that it's a legitimate ticket and tells the young man that he has to move his bag because his seatmate has a right to that seat. So he complains further and says, well, I don't want her sitting. She's obviously, she's homeless, she's dirty, she smells. And the flight attendant says, sir, you have to let her sit down. So she sits, and of course, the man's still mumbling and grumbling. And a young woman across the aisle looks over at the woman and says, don't pay any attention to him. He, just know that you belong here. So as they're sitting there, her arm accidentally bumps the young man's arm. And he immediately screeches and said, you've ruined my suit! <laughs> and, he, and the flight attendant has to uh, uh, intervene again. And the young woman across the aisle says, look, let's stop all this. Why don't we exchange seats? So the young man and the young woman exchange seats. He's glad to do that. Get away from her. So... Again, the young woman tells the, the poor woman that, please don't pay any mind of that guy. You know, he's, he, he's just lost himself. 
and <clears throat> they begin a conversation, and she introduces herself as Amina, and the, the poor woman introduces herself as Anne, and they talk, and Amina tells Anne that she's excited to be on this flight. She's never flown first class before, but she's going for a job interview, and her potential employer has provided the ticket so that she can fly uh, comfortably to her interview. And she's excited about this possibility because this job is a dream job for her. She is going to be able to work for a nonprofit, bring her life together and help her family, and it is the dream job that she's been looking for. So the next scene shows us with the young man in an office, and he's sitting in front of a desk, and the person behind is obviously the boss or the CEO of, of whatever company it, it is involved, and the CEO is asking the young man, he says, why do you want to work here? And he's saying, well, I, I really appreciate the work your company does, and I want to uh, participate in it. And the, the man says, well, I appreciate you being here and on time. And he says, yes, very important for me to be on time. And then the, he says, we have two candidates, and that's when, guess who walks in? <laughs> Amina. <laughs> So she sits down. And so the, the CEO is talking with them about why they both want to work for this non, non-profit. And Amina uh, tells him that at one point in her life she had been homeless. And now she's beginning to turn her life around and she wants to help others. And she sees her work in this company as being an opportunity to pay back. And the young man sniffs and says, well, I didn't need to be homeless to have compassion. No sarcasm. (laughs) And so the CEO says, you know, this has been a very interesting process for us, and you are our two final candidates, and we wanted to find out a little bit more about you. And so I want to introduce you to my colleague. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. So in walks... And, yes, exactly right. So the CEO says, you know, this is important work, and we want to we live what we believe at this corporation. And so we want to do a little test and find out if you really believed or lived the way that, we, uh, that you proclaim. And, of course, the young man immediately realized, uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> he says, this is not fair. You tricked me. And the CEO says, well, I think we, and who should we choose? And Amina, of course, gets the job. And the young man still is not going to give up. He continues to protest until finally security gets called and escorts him gently out of the room. All right. And that's the end of the, sh- that's the, end of the video. Now, okay, it's a bit hyperbolic, right? It's a bit predictive. But I think sometimes things like that, that are hyperbolic and and predictable, are just like what the Proverbs wrote. Because the Proverbs are giving us a hyperbolic view of wisdom and somewhat predictable as opposed to folly, right? But it's sometimes in those blown-up versions that we begin to realize that even in our subtleties of life, we are what we live. Our wisdom is contained in the things that we do and the things that we connect with. So that the, the writer of Proverbs is presenting us with that invitation to live in wisdom, not just in front of people, but in every aspect of our lives. I think both the authors of Proverbs and the author of the person who wrote, or the author who wrote the letter to the, to the Ephesians are inviting us to see wisdom as part of our lives. Obviously, for the writer of Ephesians, it's got a Christian bent to it, and it's tying, the, tying Christ into wisdom, that following Christ is a wise way to live, that following Christ is a participation with God's love and grace. Now, being wise people, living the good life, is in service to our, to our neighbor, 
no matter who our neighbor may be, every day, not just sometimes. And that we, by living that wise life, are participating with God in God's loving grace and in God's compassion for a hurting and broken world. If we all can live wisely, what a difference it would make. Amen. We are going to return our gifts to God. We have heard God's word and now accept the opportunity to share our gifts as God has shared with us. Please bring your gifts forward during the offertory. If you prefer online or mail in giving, instructions are provided in the announcements and e blasts. May God add blessings to all we do, all we give, and all we receive. sweet and low fear not I am with thee peace be still in all of my love and flows Jesus 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 sweetest name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I go Discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering lords away. Jesus, 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 sweetest in his name I know, fills my heart with longing. Keeps me singing as I go. Though sometimes he leads me through water steep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, seasons footprints all the way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweet his name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I go. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God in Jesus, fully known. Creator, Word, and Spirit, one. Amen. Let us pray. God's beautiful creation overflows with water, sunlight, and soil to grow our food. When we share the fruits of this earth, there is more than enough for all. There is a table of plenty set by God who loves us. At this table, all are fed, and still there are gifts overflowing into the world God loves. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them in gratitude and praise. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.
Let us together send each other forth with these words. Be with us, Lord God, as we go back into the world to love and serve you. May the lips that have sung your praises always speak the truth in love. May the ears that have heard your word be open to all that is good. May the feet that has brought us to this house of prayer Always walk in your ways through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, go into the world and know that the good life is a wise life, a wise life of sharing and loving and extending God's grace to all the people we may meet in our lives. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.